Anxiety yeah. can mean a lot of things, runaway thoughts, a racing heartbeat. It can lead to panic attacks, things that I've dealt with most of my life. Best-selling author Sarah Wilson, known for her popular sugar detox program, also lives with anxiety. And she writes about it in her incredible new book called First We Make the Beast Beautiful. We had a chance mm. to sit down and talk about what we've both learned from our experiences. I describe it as a beige buzzing because it's sort of heavy and dark and it's 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 always there. It's always there in my head. Um, it's as long as I can remember. You actually refer to it as a superpower that you possess. Yeah, I do. And I think uh, we are a generation who haven't heard anxiety cast in those terms. It's been medicalized. It's a problem. You try to dial it down. Oh, and if people survive and, and thrive and become business people, oh, it's because they've got their anxiety in check. Right. Well, in fact, it's the anxiety that brought them to that place. So it's the reason I became a radio DJ when I was 18, and I wanted to be close to the music. In fact, I needed to be close to the music. Yeah. Because it's my, it's my therapy. It puts my brain in a comfort zone that my brain needs to find um, every day. Sarah says her comfort zone is writing. She's a best-selling author and popular wellness blogger, an accomplishment she says wasn't always easy. She revealed details of her struggle in her new book. I wrote this book because I wanted to have a different conversation. People are going to want to have anxiety by the is. time we're done with that. <laughs> my anxiety spirals are all in my head. Okay. So they're a thought, and then another thought on top of that, and then that thought there, and what if that, and I should be able to do that. Can it happen when you're in conversation with somebody at dinner? Can your brain sort of take over? Oh, yes. And then you go, oh my gosh, I'm doing that thing, but I'm not, this person probably thinks I'm crazy. In social situations, it can be particularly difficult at parties, um, anything where there's, I'm, I'm kind of aware of what's going on, and then my thoughts are going somewhere else. Yeah. What's your youngest memory of it? When I was about seven, going to school, and I missed two bus stops because the woman next to me was wearing perfume, and part of the anxious experience is being super sensitive to sounds and smells and pretty much everything. Her perfume distressed me so much that I had to put my head down and I, you know, I missed two bus stops. At the same time that Sarah worries her anxiety has caused her to miss some of life's moments, she also credits a disorder for her desire to connect. They seem to be paradoxical. I mean, look at you. You converse with millions of people every day. Right. Um, I write. That's my way of communicating. And it seems like they're contra contradictory. I don't think they are. We need to do both. We need to pulse between the two. Sure. I get a little nervous. I get panicky. I have tools that I've achieved that help me sort of get through those anxious spirals as you refer to them. But the other side of it, when I accomplish something, I get the chills. My, yeah. my, my successes and victories are enormous. You very much embrace the excitement that comes with it. I think the anxious often have these like expressive quirks, let's call it a quirk, you know. Every single one of my books I handwrite on napkins in restaurants, on the back of receipts, on the back of a plane ticket. It's just all there and then I right. piece it together. It's chaos, but I bring it together. The beauty, Sarah says, is in that process of trying to pull it all together, even when it may seem impossible. This conversation is about sort of saying, it's okay, you're not alone. There's a reason why you fret. There's something important that you're fretting about. You know, you care. That's something that anxious people, I believe, really have in common, and I think it's one of the most beautiful things. I agree. About the beast that we have to live with. I agree, the beautiful beast. You care. One of the other interesting analogies that we talked about is sort of you think about anxiety as exists in nature with animals. Imagine a herd of animals, a couple of them being anxious, the outliers, if you will, sort of wandering the perimeter of the camp where these animals might be otherwise together. Yeah. It's those outliers that also see the hunters coming and run down to warn uh -huh. the pack. So there is a great sense of power, but it's really how you look at it. What Sarah does such a great job of in this book, and you should pick it up at all, and so many of us have to deal with anxiety and more, is the reframing in the way that we talk about it, yeah. the way yeah. we discuss it, and the way we view ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you strip it of its power, I think you talking about you it, it. saying, yeah. yeah, it's like, okay, this mm -hmm. is a part of me, the way I have blue Correct. eyes, yeah. I'm this tall, Correct. and it's okay. It makes you who you are. Yeah. And also, the you care. You care. Yeah. Yeah. You care so much. That's right. And I think yeah. that she illustrated that. But yeah. we see so much as mental health, we have to start talking. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Bring it up. Yep. And you can find out more about Sarah and some of her tips for um, living with anxiety today.com. All right. Hello, Today fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.